No, I'm the not. Phantom of the Mall is here. <laughs> is that is he the Phantom of the Mall, <laughs> or just some beep and a broken hockey mask? Yeah. The Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge, is a 1980s slasher. Uh, not starring Pauly Shore, but Pauly Shore sure shit is in it, yep. which made me very excited. This is a first time watch for me, and a movie that I am a thousand percent buying on Blu-ray as soon as I get the opportunity. Uh, which should be probably tonight, we'll see. <laughs> um, this is currently streaming on Shudder, and yes, the theme song that plays during the end credits... Sung by the Vandals, has a chorus that goes, Is that the Phantom of the Mall, or is that some retard <laughs> in a broken hockey mask? That's the fucking... Oh my god. The chorus. <laughs> chorus of this song. Yeah. It's hilarious. The whole movie. It's the 80s. I love this movie so much. This is definitely one of my favorite... 80 slasher new watches. Yeah. Now, granted, I've seen most 80 slashers. Um, like the bigger named ones. Like, I shouldn't say bigger names. Um, like not insanely obscure. Like, mm. if, I don't know, like moderately named ones. Mm. Like, I, I've the seen B, like. The B ones. Sure, the B ones. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the only ones I hadn't seen. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of a rare moment where I get to watch a newer, uh, new to me, 80s slasher. Um, uh, that's this quality. Yeah. This is that kind of movie that I watch that I haven't seen like a, like a blood rage or a mutilator or something that I didn't catch till a little later on. That I'm like, what is this? What is this? You know, as ridiculous as this film is, this film has some really strong elements to it that I want to give a real praise to to give real praise to. Like, I'm gonna have a lot of fun discussing the ridiculousness of this film. But before we get into that, I do want to praise a couple things that I think are genuinely like pretty spectacular about this film. And this is one I don't talk about much in film because I think that this is a very underappreciated art, but used wonderfully here uh, and shockingly is the stunt work. There is a lot of like action movie stunt work going on in here that was really impressive. Like a lot of it. A ton. Like I was shocked by how much like this felt like a like a moderate budgeted action film yeah. with how much stunt work there is going on in the film. People swinging from rafters, falling out of buildings, cars catching on fire, getting, like, jumping, yeah, getting hit by a sideswipe car that flips the guy in the air and yes. he lands on the ground and you see it all in one take. Yeah. Wild stuff. People really driving wild. cars, flipping them, driving cars through like parking lots with cars pulling out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, going around them, hitting the cars Jumping cars, flipping them. People getting like, their heads chopped off. Oh, wait, that one wasn't. No, that, yeah. They did burn like a real body in yes. this, though. <laughs> it did. looked like a real human body they lit on fire. Yeah. Uh, in like a, I don't know, some kind of a uh, container. <laughs> yes, it looked real. Super it did. real. It and did. I think that the practical um, effects, too, actually were pretty decent. Like, I, yeah. I mean, they're not like phenomenal but they were good there was one uh towards the end that i don't even know that you saw because i think you were looking down with somebody's like face kind of like smashed in basically mm, that no i didn't really good. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'll watch it again though for sure um but yeah i thought this was like if you've missed this and you're a fan of like 80s cheese yes this is this is top tier high caliber slasher like, yeah, it's got the the 80s gore charm. isn't really there that much. That's no. probably my biggest downside. Sure, there definitely could have been more gore, but the it's got great characters. Yes, very memorable. It's got tons of gratuitous nudity. <laughs> it's got a really fun soundtrack. It's got on, and here's another praise. It's got a really awesome location, which yes. is the same mall from Chopping Mall. Yep. Um, but used throughout the whole thing. So it's got like a big um, set to run around because it's just a mall, but they got 
the whole damn thing. They they really explore a lot of this mall. Mm -hmm. And then you get like the air vents and the tunnels because this, of course, <laughs> yeah. is a play on Phantom of the Opera. This is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a uh, rendition of it. And um, the film is fucking ludicrous. It's so insane. It is insane. It's super, yeah. But it in the best so way. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, as a big Polly Shore fan who loves Son in Law and Biodome and freaking In the Army Now and Jury Duty and Encino Man, like, I've been a big fan of Polly Shore forever. And I've seen some of those movies I just mentioned, especially like Son in Law and Biodome. Like, I've seen them like legit like a hundred plus times. Like, I've seen them a lot, a lot. I love them. I can quote every fucking line from them. I love The Weasel, right? So, like, I had no idea who was in this movie. And so when I saw his name, I was like, and it was like one of the top build names. I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, Polly Shore. Mm -hmm. Like, this is exciting. And he's good. He's just not, he's Polly Shore-esque. Like, he just hasn't developed the Polly Shore-isms yet. He doesn't have any of his, like, you know, signature lines or any of his signature movements. He doesn't act like the weasel, as I said. Like, from Encino Man on, he's always the weasel. But before that, he's kind of just Polly Shore, mm -hmm. um, who grew up, you know, in the Laugh Factory. His mom owns the Laugh Factory, and he's like, you know, he grew up in a comedy club. So he grew up around humor and is a funny guy. Um, and it was, you know, it was great to see him here. He still was a fun character. Do I think... I just hit the camera. Do I think uh -oh. that I would have, like, loved him and remembered him... If I didn't know he was Polly Shore, somewhat, yeah. somewhat. He, he doesn't stand out too, too much, mm -hmm. but he is one of the main characters. He is. And he's fine. He's, he's good. Fine. Yeah. 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 He doesn't, yeah, he's not, he's not Polly Shore yet. He has, he's not the standout of the movie. He's making me laugh every five seconds. Yeah. Um, I just, as far as, like, I really like this movie, like, I was definitely having a blast with it, but <laughs> because it is a Phantom of the Opera, like, remake, it is pretty different from, like, the Phantom of the Opera story. The only real things that are kept are, like, the bare bones, like, disfigured man pines after a woman who wants another more attractive, non-disfigured man. <laughs> And, you know, of course, the fact that he's, like, hiding in the tunnels and stuff. And the air vents of the mall. Um, I mean, yeah, it's the skeleton. It's this framework mm -hmm. yeah. of Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you didn't want... <laughs> did you want this to be a musical? Is that maybe your Oh, well, sure. Yeah, like, any time Phantom of the Opera, like... I mean, which is funny, because, like, the original, you know, like, 1920s film is... Silent. Silent, and there is no music, but... I've definitely been conditioned from Broadway. There's nothing Broadway. but music in the silence. Yeah, anymore. there's no, there's not any like singing though. Right. But Broadway and you know the Gerard Butler fan of the opera, um, and also fan of the Paradise. Like I, I do really love the music quality because it's the fan of the opera. But this is the fan of the mall, so it is perfect yeah. <laughs> for what it is. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I would want this to be a musical. I don't think I it would, would work as a musical. <laughs> probably not. Um, no. I love it how it is. Mm. Uh, I, a musical might take it to like a whole nother level of ridiculous. Especially if it's it like... Insane. Especially if we got songs like, Is That the Phantom of the Mall? <laughs> or just a retard in a broken heart. I mean, mask. yeah, like that... If that was could, actually in the film... That could be really cool. That would have been fucking hilarious. I mostly just wanted to point it out in case there's people who are like big fans of Phantom of the Opera and are thinking that it's gonna be like that. It's not, <laughs> but it's still really enjoyable if you're a fan of Phantom of the Opera. Just don't expect any like singing. We threw this on last night, or I should say I did. We I don't know what compelled me to press play on this. Like I have, we're watching the X Files right now, and and I want to get back to the marvelous Miss Maisel. And I was going to press play on those, but I just wanted to throw on something horror. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to throw on something new to me. Um, and there was nothing new, new that I really wanted to watch. And I was just like, well, let me just kind of pan through. And I saw Phantom of the Mall, and it was something that I've had my eye on now for a long time. And just never press play. And I, I was just like, know you know what? Screw it. Yeah. Finally, I'm just going to throw this movie on. 
and I'm so glad I did. In doing that, though, I didn't take any notes, so everything's going to have to be from memory. I'm sure this would be even better if I did take notes, because I'm sure there's all sorts of things that I'll... But maybe not. Maybe I'll remember everything. But, yeah, so we get um, our... Now, of course, as always, guys, remember, we don't remember anybody's name. The only person's name I for sure remember is Eric, and Polly Shore's character is Buzz. And Melody. Oh, yeah, Melody. Yeah, because she's not Christine. Because she's sang because she's uh, named after a song, but or, there's no singing. There's no singing. <laughs> no. Um, so there is the new mall. It's been opened up, and we find out that it was opened up on a killing ground. Um, Eric's family wouldn't move, and so they had them killed. Yep. Uh, Melody is the only survivor, or is she? And we find out that Eric was actually a survivor. Now, why he didn't immediately go to the cops uh, in the hospital and just get back to his life and decided to, you know, because by the time they burnt down the house and they laid the plans and the foundation and built this enormous three-story mall, you're talking years of construction. Yeah. I don't know where the hell Eric went. And why he was, like, waiting, stewing. Like, did he follow Melody at all during this time? Because he wasn't recovering during that. And when you have faith, when you have burns that bad, when you get, like, third-degree burns on your face, like, that shit is very, very dangerous. Yeah. Like, they have to put you in a concealed area because you are so prone to infection with that kind of um, exposure to your, to your organ. You know, skin is, is easily infected when it's been burned that bad. Um, so, now, could you survive it? Sure. I mean, anything's possible. But, like, the fact that he didn't seek medical help and that he just became, like, Myers Hobo from fucking Halloween 2 mm -hmm. and just wandered the streets and probably, you know, how long before they actually built tunnels for him to start exploring? Yeah, I don't Not, know. It along at least like at least a, six months to a year before sure. he, he was going to be able to go and start to create his lair, yeah, and then plan his revenge. And what are the odds that Melody's even going to be there? Like she's just going to happen to be at the mall trying to get a job, and yeah, she never like, gets she never works there though. She does get hired there. She does get I hired, don't... but they don't work. Yeah, she does. She does it. She's waitressing. She waitresses at like one of the restaurants uh, there. Yeah, she gets hired. God, and it's such a short, quick scene. I think her friend is uh, like working at like one of the clothing stores. Yeah. But she, yeah, she's she's waitressing. I guess remember she that does. guy's giving her like the stink eye at the oh, table. Oh, that's right. She's waitressing. That's right. I don't know where he goes in the meantime. It's Maybe such a he quick just scene. Goes down the into majority the... of the time they're in the mall. Yeah. They're just walking around the mall. Yes. <laughs> and she's flirting with this photographer. Yeah. And he's like doing the investigation. the The premise is absolutely asinine. Yeah. So yeah, yes. <laughs> I completely forgot she even worked. Yeah, because that's the ninety nine percent of the film. I know they're just hanging out in the mall, and for a mall that's operating and brand new, mm -hmm. there's very few people in that mall. Yeah, it is. I mean, they're probably not going to maybe... stay open. Yeah, maybe it's supposed to be a smaller area. They need a three-story mall in yeah. a smaller area. It's an enormous mall for it is a small a huge, town. A huge mall, yeah. No. I don't have an answer then. I don't know. <laughs> I try. That's okay. <laughs> You're always like, no. That's <laughs> okay. That place would be hammered. Yeah, it would be very bad. Yeah. But I get it. They it, they rented the mall out to do the movie. They shot at night, and all they had walking around was the crew. Yes. Right? They could hire extras, but the more extras you hire, the more liability risks you run. Because people could vandalize, people could, you know, get into shit they're not supposed to. They probably have to keep an eye on people. They have to have security guards watching people to make sure they're not stealing things. Yeah. Because in order for it to look like a functioning open mall, the storefronts have to be open. They can't be closed right. and locked down, right? Right. So you have to have, like, stores vulnerable to theft. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm sure they filmed this when the mall was closed and had to have a bunch of security guards. So they couldn't have a lot of people in there. So that's the excuse, yeah. right? It is what it is. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I just, I have to talk about this scene because this scene 
actually made me yell out loud at, at kind of just a what? <laughs> because it's so ridiculous. It's so insane. So there is this security guard that works there. Um, our, our photographer gets a picture of him through a like mirror up on the wall. Um, and he chases after him for whatever reason. I don't even know why you would have any reason to chase him. Um, because I guess he knows he's going to expose him, but it's like, yeah, he's like, you took a picture of me. You took a picture of me as a security guard. I don't think that's illegal. Um, but he knows that he knows probably right. that there's something nefarious going on here, even though the chase just abruptly ends and he just lets him go. I don't understand that. But then they <laughs> resume the chase later and he gets into a car and chases after him before there's another scene I got to freaking mention too. We'll get back to this. Uh, the, the don't let me forget the piano player. Cause okay. that's the, that might be even more ridiculous than this scene. Now that I'm thinking about it, but this guy is being chased by a security guard. He gets into an elevator, which the security guard could have a hundred percent stopped yeah, like because he gets his, his arm in there. Him. This is very, this is ridiculous. This is another problem I have with Halloween too. The original Halloween too. Michael sticks his hand in the in the elevator in the hospital and it closes on his hand and then it kind of opens for a second and then he pulls it back and it closes again. In a hospital especially, if you put your hand in there and that freaking safety bar hits your arm, it is opening. Yes. Jan- Lori would have been killed in that freaking yeah. elevator a thousand percent. Michael would have stopped that door from closing. It doesn't yeah. just kind of open and then close back again. That's not how those work. And it's always annoyed me in that movie. It's like, no, you should not have had his hand go in there. That doesn't make any sense. And everybody knows that's how elevators work. If you get your hand in there, that bar is there for a reason. It's a safety bar. It literally is there to, if anything touches it, it immediately opens the door. Yes. For safety. (laughs) Um, Anyways, this guy does it. He gets his arms in there and then pulls them out for whatever reason. It would have opened if he would have just kept his arms in there. It doesn't matter. Uh... But then the elevator immediately starts to go up. And it's the front here, right? Mm-hmm. So this is one of those elevators where like you have the you have the front which is a wall and then the opening, right? Then on the very back side, if you were to go around the whole elevator, the elevator is one of those ones that is is um it it's exposed. Glass. It it's it's an exposed elevator on the back side. So you could potentially grab onto it if you like jumped up onto the ledge that separates it and then up onto the elevator so somehow this guy was at the doors the elevator immediately starts to rise and in that one millisecond that the guy would have had the security guy would have had he ran around the whole thing jumped up on top of the elevator and then Smashes his face down almost like Michael Myers in Halloween Four when he's on top mm-hmm. of the of there and, and Rachel and, and Jamie are in the car and he smashes his head on the yeah. windshield without the breaking of the glass. He like goes boom like with his head down like this. It made me go what the fuck because <laughs> I was it's the most unexpected moment I've seen in a while it because so there's unexpected. no way there's no way he got up there a yeah. and there's no way he got up there without the dude hearing him get up there. <laughs> yeah. He gets up there so fast. He Spider-Man's like his way up there with no noise. Silently. And then, yes. It was so funny when we saw it because it was so out of nowhere. It is so fucking funny. I can't even begin to tell you how funny I thought that was. I seriously laughed about that for like a minute straight. I yeah. couldn't stop laughing. It was just so asinine. How did he get up there? I don't know. I don't know how he got up there. And then like... Now, if, they, if, they, if he went into the elevator... At the third floor, and it was going down, he could have jumped over onto yeah. it. He was still made noise. Yeah, exactly. But it would have been possible. But for it to close and it immediately start rising, and it's a glass elevator. Yeah. How did he not see him get up there? <laughs> a, because he had to go around to get on top of it. I don't know. Without him seeing him, it's glass all the way around. It's impossible. So he would have saw him either come this way or this way. It doesn't matter. He would have heard him. Yeah. And it wouldn't have been possible for him to get up there that fast. Yes. And he's just on there. And, ah! <laughs> it's impossible. It's the most it's insane so scene. Yes. But it's that kind of stuff. I don't care. Yeah. That, like, and it gets away with it, right? Sure. Like, if that happened in a Last of Us episode, 
Oh my god. I'd be yeah. furious. Yeah, of course. I'd be because, like, there's no way. How? Right. But that's because it's the sh- like the movie doesn't have it's not taking itself that seriously. No. Like it doesn't have that kind of writing where you're like because there's tons of things that don't make sense that you're just like whatever like just move on from it. And that this is one of them, but it's really hilarious when you see it. What's even more hilarious? What's even more hilarious? And I guess I have an explanation to a degree. This is the only explanation, but I think it's just ridiculous. So these girls are walking by this piano player and he's like, hey, ladies, and like continues to keep playing because they're hot. So he just wants to say hey to him, even yeah. though he's like 100. Um, so this 100-year-old piano player decides to mug her Melody in the parking lot. He gets we he gets shot in the shoulder <laughs> by an arrow. Yes. Or it's like in the chest. It's like here. Yeah. It's it's here. It's in the pectoral muscle. Then she tells the cops that he got shot in the arm. Okay. <laughs> not I, I said arm because I was remembering what she said, but it's clearly not. It is. It, it's in the chest. Yes. Um, somehow Eric was there with a cross go, crossbow and shoots this guy from a distance. Oh, and Eric is also uh, training for the Kumite <laughs> yes. from Bloodsport in this movie. He's down there and he's just, and there's a lot of like roundhouses and like he's a lot of like martial art damn. fighting in this. Yeah, he's That was another one out, I was really surprised by. Yeah. Is is not only their stunt work, but there's like martial art, martial artist stunt work yeah. going on in here too, where dudes it's are like so, literally like kung fu fighting. It's so weird. It's, <laughs> it's so, so amazing, is what it is. is. Well, yes, but it's so weird because it was so un, like unexpected, really. Yeah. You just don't expect martial arts in a slasher. So anyway, this guy gets shot in the chest, not the arm, mm-hmm. with a crossbow. Then he runs off. We don't know who he is at that point. Then the next day, a full 24 hours later, he stumbles into the bathroom because we we go to the morning of that day. Then it's nighttime. And then that piano player, I don't know if like this was just edited wrong, but for some reason, 24 hours later, he stumbles into the bathroom, takes off his jacket, and he is full, still bleeding (laughs) profusely. Yeah. From his wound in his shoulder, from or when in his chest, from when he got shot by that crossbow. I do feel like it was a poor edit because it's not just like the wound is bleeding; like there's a hole in his shirt. Isn't there? That's what That's, I thought. Yeah, like the shirt is the one that he, he didn't wore. even change it. Yeah. No, like he just went straight to work. <laughs> he just is like <laughs> just back to the piano. I'm fine. I'm probably fine. It's so. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. But was he wearing that shirt under his burglar outfit? Oh, yeah, he must have been. (laughs) That's the thing. Like, he's wearing, like, all black when he's, like, trying to freaking burglar her. (laughs) This is his, like, first day on the job. And he's already mugging girls in the parking lot at his age. Like... I know. It's not a good look. It's... I just don't see a dude of his age mugging girls... In the parking lot of his job. <laughs> well, he did. And it's like, how much are they paying this guy? Not that he's got to be mugging girls yeah. in the freaking... He's getting like a dollar an hour and he's like... He's like, hey ladies, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> see you after. So, leave. Kaylee, as a woman, have you ever been to a mall or any store, any clothing store in your life where you went to the changing room? And the changing room had either no door or no curtain. And you stripped down completely nude with all these other women in there and started changing your clothes. Yeah, literally every single store I've ever been into in every mall. (laughs) Here's also what to add to that. Not only is there no door or curtain separating it for privacy, but there also, not only is there a... (laughs) Is there a perverted, uh, you know, security guard who's watching them? And I'm not going to lie. Like, if there was if there was a security camera that is, like, exposing women like this, where it's, like, right out in the open. It is literally my job. I'm sitting there. It's going to be hard not to look. It's going to be hard. He didn't put this camera here. This is what's weird about this movie, right? This isn't a private camera he set up. 
This was installed by the mall. This maybe, is his job. Maybe he right? did install it. No. Maybe he did. No. No. This is a hundred percent the malls. It's it's lo- it's linked into this CCTV that uh-huh. he's got in there, right? This is with all the other cameras. It's just that this mall mm-hmm. just so happens to have a dressing room with no curtains and no doors and a security camera on that. Literally looking right into their rooms. <laughs> it's insanity. It is There's insanity. no way. You're not allowed to get any security <laughs> jobs for malls. I'm, I'm just not, in case. I'm just not in case. saying. I'm just not saying. Case. I'm just saying. Just in case. If, you might have to look. But. If I. Okay. No. If if there's a channel. <laughs> I'm Okay. I'm sorry though. Like if you're just sitting there and you're fucking like. I'm not saying I'm going to be sitting there staring the whole day. I'm not going to do that. Okay, I get it. It's a, I honestly I, I will tell you this because if I'm flipping by, any guy who tells you they're not gonna look for a sec is fucking lying. If you're flipping by in the security cameras and I'm seeing like a bunch of naked babes getting freaking naked right there on the camera, I'm gonna be like, dude, what? Here's the <laughs> what? But then after I looked and I would for a few seconds for sure, I would be like. I would either go to the manager, I'd go to somebody, and I would be like, you've got to get fucking doors or something. On, you got to yeah. get curtains or you got to get rid of this camera. Yes. Like, this is fucked up. Yes. Right? But I'm not going to not look for like a few seconds. I, I'm not going to lie about that. They're, they're going to be on them and I'm going to be like, and then I'll be like, okay, I'm fucked up. I can't do this. I can't look. <laughs> but you did look. But I wouldn't, <laughs> but I wouldn't put it there. I wouldn't put it there. But like if I scan, if you're gonna scan across a channel, right, and you see a bunch of naked chicks, is you're gonna look for a second. I'm sorry. It's like, wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, what? This. What is this? Is this is wrong. A hundred percent in this movie just for nudity, 100%. which is fine. But 100%. there is nobody on this planet except psychopaths who get fully naked. To try on new clothes. <laughs> like, that is just not a thing. You don't take your underwear and your bra off. Maybe your bra. Maybe. That one I could see. Like, I suppose. But you're not taking your underwear off. Yeah. Like, there's just no way. Like, no way at all. I mean, this is the same logic, right? Of, of like, um, of movies that we've watched or that I've watched that have, like, Sorority House Massacre or something where... The girls are taking showers With, without like, the, the curtain. Yeah, on. exactly. It's the same exact thing. It's like nobody takes a shower without drawing the curtain. Yeah. Like, but it's there. It's not there so the camera can see them. Right. Right. Like <laughs> this is purposely in the movie to show nudity, and yeah. I'm a thousand percent <laughs> fine with it. It's I just so thought ridiculous. it was so funny that there is a security camera there that this guy did not put there because the other security guard, played by Ken Forey from Dawn of the Dead. He comes over and he's like, oh, would you stop looking at that? And I'm like, dude, if you put a security camera in a woman's changing room with no privacy, uh, <laughs> these security guards, it's literally their job to watch it. Yeah, but not a, that camera the whole time. Not the whole time, and but it is their is job so to continue gross. to keep checking about it. He that is gross. Is so he gross is gross. I'm it. not saying he's not. But I'm sorry, you're not going to put that camera specifically there. <laughs> without the guys either watching or complaining right they're going to be sitting there they're, the dudes are not going to be doing their job or they're going to they're going to report you there's a, there's only one of two things happening there yeah. they're not going to just like flip to that one and be like okay yeah no they're not stealing anything flip they're going to either be like this is an invasion of privacy and i need to tell somebody yeah. or i'm only tuning into this channel and i'm not doing my job yeah right you immediately need to put doors on the 100%. That's the only and solution. there's never been a dressing room like that that I've ever seen, especially with a security camera on no. it. That doesn't no. have freaking, you know, some kind of a privacy barrier. There's no way. I just thought it was funny. It is funny. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, then um, we get we get Buzz... Who plants an ear as a joke in the ice cream? He's, he works at the ice cream shop, and then later uh, an eyeball gets mixed into the yogurt, which I guess Buzz or whoever was working didn't notice the eyeball 
and it was right on top. I'm not yeah. really sure how that works. I don't know. I don't know how you're so bad at your job you didn't notice body parts were right yeah. on top. Um, but I don't know. Uh, the girl just throws it away because she thinks it's Buzz and then continues to keep eating the ice cream, which has the eyeball the blood, blood and the eyeball in it, goo. which I would think she would think would be like, this is some salty ice cream. Ew. Yeah. No, it's, that was, that was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I thought the, I thought the car chase scene was pretty cool. Um, I thought all the stunt work, um, the, the freaking, and this is like Commando as well, like we were just talking about in Red Eye. Um, he grabs the freaking banner and like swings from yes. the rafters as the as the thing rips away from the wall, much like Arnold does, except for it's like a balloon thing that mm-hmm. he grabs onto in Commando. Uh, and he swings down on it, and, but he swings down and he hits um, po, 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 Poser? It's po, po, Prozer? 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 Posner? Posner. Posner. Thank you. Yeah, because I, I, I made that joke at the end that it's not Posner, it's Poser. This guy's a poser. Mm-hmm. Um, we have two really beautiful young women who are jealous of this older blonde woman on stage with a freaking lion's mane. And they're like, yeah. oh my god, she always looks so perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, now this is not too far-fetched. There's beautiful sure. women that are insecure as fuck and think all these other women are so much more beautiful than them when it's not true. She's not bad looking at all. She's, no, she's she very just, attractive, but for her age. But like, she's like super ultra eighties. Like, right. That's really, but what that's it is. what it is, right? Is they that they're like just the like, style. oh, she's got the she's got the that. style. Yeah, she's got the look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. I just thought it was funny. I was like, it is funny, really, though. you girls are jealous of her. I. I don't see that, but whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, what else? We didn't talk about the look of the killer. And uh, he wears the mask. And when he reveals the mask, he kind of has that uh, one side of his face. He's very two-faced, like uh, mm-hmm. from Batman. Um, he he kind of reminded me of a few different burn looks. Uh, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of Cropsy from The Burning, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it had a very specific look to it that I'm, I'm kind of blanking on right now with kind of the bulgy eye. Um, what am I thinking of? I don't know. I'm going I'm to beat myself up for it when I realize it later. Um, the big bulgy eye in, in the prosthetics where I'm always kind of like laughing. Jason... I mean, obviously, uh, well, sure, he kind of yeah. looks like Jason in, in the original Friday the 13th, yes. the original design for the kid Jason, yeah. the, the R.A. Lehman, Lerm, Lerm, Lehman, however you say that guy's name, um, Jason design, uh, definitely has that look to it. Yeah, for sure. I really like how he looked. I think that he was scary, and I like his voice, too. His voice was really creaky and, like, weird. They did some kind of, like, auto not auto-tuning, but, like... Oh, yeah. They adjusted it somehow. Yeah. Uh, and it was cool. I remember the movie. It's uh, Red Christmas, but you've never seen it. Oh. Yeah. If you haven't seen Red Christmas, that's a depressing-ass uh, Christmas slasher from modern times, too. It's in mm-hmm. the last 10 years or less, maybe five years. Mm, maybe 10 years. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, uh, they're... Yeah, I mean, there's. I can name a few more trivial things. Um, I'm not really sure how the Phantom of the Opera. I do love how the trash compactor in this is just the door. Yeah. Closing, mm-hmm. but no compacting no is going on. It's just the door is closing and then it opens. Yeah. I don't understand that. And then the Phantom is strong enough to push it back up, but then the other guy is just like helpless to it. Mm-hmm. Um, he has that's like just all that working strength. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um,. And, yeah, a lot of funny fight scenes, a lot of rad chase scenes, a lot of stunt work, a lot of ridiculous moments. Fucking rad movie. I, I definitely it wish I would have really taken cool. notes, but I think I remembered all the, like, really yeah, real I feel fun like you stuff. Did. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, we probably lost a couple subscribers because they think I'm, like, some peeping Tom or something because <laughs> I admitted that yeah, the I last, look for last review, you're like, look for a second. Men's rights. In this yeah. Like, I'm, a, I'm a total piece of shit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a 
it's a wonderful film. It is. It's super fun, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we watched it. Oh God, yeah. yeah, God, yeah, and this is definitely something I would, I would absolutely rewatch. There is uh, Arrow Blu-ray of this, and I'm gonna get my hands on it for sure. So that's that, I guess. Uh, it, it, it's an absolute must-watch. It is on Shutter currently, so you, if you have Shutter, you don't even have to pay uh, to rent it or anything. Although you do pay for Shutter technically. Um, if you already have Shutter, though, you have no excuse. No excuse. You gots to be watching it. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Such a fun time. That's that. Adios.